watching, you're watching, you're watching. You're watching, you're watching, you're watching. You're watching, you're watching, you're watching. You're watching. Hi, this is Hannes van Dahl from Sabaton, and you are watching Loud TV. So this is very hyper specific, I don't know if you'll know the answer, which yeah. may, you may have no idea. But in your upcoming North American tour, yep. I happen to live in Oregon, yep. and you have two stops in Portland. It's the only stop, the entire tour, where you guys are in the same town twice. And it's right. one night after the other, any idea why? Yeah, why? Why? Oh, that's a great question. Um, some, yeah, well, sometimes, if we, if we can do it, like, schedule-wise, if there's a good opportunity to do more than one show, yeah. we're gonna do it. So I don't know, maybe not more complicated than that. Okay. And more specifics, I don't know actually. You don't know. Okay. No. Okay. 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 Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. It just was interesting to me because you've got a very full schedule. Yeah. But Portland is twice. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. Maybe it was like sometimes there's a too far drive, yeah. and then you can squeeze in another one. Or maybe the, the maybe the area was too small because every time you guys go to Portland, you sell out. Yeah. So maybe that's. Um, so, uh, my two favorite bands on this planet are Judas Priest and Sabaton. Hmm. And the fact that you guys were doing a tour together was like my dream come true. Yeah. So obviously, very disappointed. Not your fault, yeah. not Judas Priest's fault, but that it was canceled. Uh, is there any plans in the future to kind of combine that billing again? Yeah. Would that ever possibly occur, or was that just a moment in time that may never come back? Well, first off, thank you for saying that. That's a huge compliment. And same for us. I mean, we all grew up on Judas Priest. And we get the opportunity to open up for them as special guests on their 50th anniversary. 50. And they are still kicking ass and it sounds great. So it was a huge honor for us to be there to do that. Schedule-wise, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, it was cut short due to Richie's uh, health issues. Thankfully, he made it and he's, he's back in business. But yeah, man, I, I, I hope so. I really hope so. We would like it for sure. Yeah. So you guys obviously come up with so many different ideas from songs from uh, your fans. You know, a lot of people, I think, from what I understand, from what I've read, they come up to you after a concert and say like, hey, have you heard of this story from my particular era or my country or whatever? And obviously there's a lot of reading that you guys are doing as well to go into that. So my question is, for the songwriting process, does that come first? Is it the idea first or is it the melody and then you fit the story to the melody? How does that happen? Yeah, but we get a lot of tips from friends. Either they are sent in or we get a book by somebody or we... Because there's only so much you know, right? You know your own history, but then there are super specific stories that you never heard about that you get as a tip one way or the, the other. And a surprising amount of tips made it to, to become a song. But not a, nine out of 10 times the music is written first, and then it's the tricky puzzle to get the right story to the song. Because truth be told, you have one shot at the story. So you don't want to mess it up, if you know what I mean. Right. You really got to make sure that the music fits the story, but also that the music justifies the story, you know? So I think like Christmas Truce, I know that that was story first and then music, but nine out of 10, it's uh, music first and then trying the puzzle to which story is going to fit. And that's also why we yet haven't done some stories that are obvious for us to do. It's simply because the music wasn't there for it. Right. Yeah. Well, and that sounds like part of the problem is that, unlike maybe some other groups who may search so many times for inspiration, you guys have, uh, you know, a planet's worth of warfare and inspiration. How do you narrow it down? And and that's what's, it, honestly, the fact that you did two back-to-back -back World War One albums, yep. first of all, like, I'm, I was history major, so yep. I mean, the fact, that's part of the reason you're my favorite, is heavy metal and history. Yeah, perfect. nice. Um, the fact that World War One was hit twice shows you just how many, and I'm sure you could even do more yep. uh, on World War One. So how do you narrow that down? How do you take all of these different ideas and say, these are the ones we need to represent, these yeah. are the ones that are important? No, it's an impossible job. 
it, it's totally, it totally is. And also, that's why we, what we felt on, on the Great War, where there's only so much music you can fit on an album. But then what about the other 10 or 12 stories that are significant for that event? Like, we can't just leave them out. But we can't put it on the album either. So it was the natural way to go to make a big brother to the Great War and, and continue in that. Because we personally felt that there are too many stories that we want to do and want to tell and that we have music for. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, so are there any scraps left on the cutting floor where there's bits of songs that exist that just didn't make it onto the album? Always, always, okay. yeah. And that we as fans will never get to hear, unfortunately. Well, oh yeah, for sure. But it, it'll, it'll just take time. I mean, some ideas are just bad, and then we scrap them. <laughs> yeah, but that's how it goes. Like, right, 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 of course. You you win you win you win some and you lose some. Yeah, but yeah. and that's part of the mu writing music. But there's a song like um, Attack of the Dead Men. We worked on that for three years until it was finished. So that could have potentially been on an earlier album, but it wasn't there yet. So some songs really need to marinate and they need their time, and some songs are written in one hour. Well, that sounds like that was the case for yours, this truth as well, that it took many years to get to the point where yeah. it was actually there. Yeah, but like I said earlier, you have one shot. We're not going to do two Christmas true songs. It's going to be one. Right, right. So then we got to make sure that we, we, one, we like it, and number two, that, that it's justifying the story. Yeah. yeah, well, and that seems too, as historians, not just musicians, but historians, that you have a heavy, a heavy obligation get it right, to do yeah. it right. What are you doing to confirm to make sure that what you're writing down is correct? Yeah, but we're not historians. We are heavy metal musicians, first and foremost, that are totally into history. Right. But the general rule, I would say, for us is no, that it, it has to be history. Yeah. It has to have started and it has to have ended and it's clear on what happened. So first the historians, not us, gets their say in it and they need to write it down and you know, they, they do their job first. Then we come in and we can have a look at it. So yeah. So I know that you guys keep coming up with different ways of approaching your fans. There's something that I have found uh, unique in the heavy metal world. And maybe I'm just not open-minded enough to see the other groups doing the same thing. But obviously you have the History Channel. Which yeah. is very, very different. Which, yeah. By the way, I love it. I watch it with my son all the time. Thank you. Um, and you have, of course, your own festival, which is yeah. unique in the metal world. Uh, and even now, Tommy has started to do Disney versions of your guys' songs. Yeah. So, <laughs> Awesome. That's right, yeah. So these are very outside of the box. These are yeah. and, but all ways that are very engaging to your fans. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I, I'm, I'm curious as to how much that you feel that is bringing more people in yeah. to what you're doing, people who might not have listened to Sabbath previously. And do you have any other kind of weird, quirky, outside the box ideas that are that we don't know about that are coming down the road? Yeah, oh, there's, there's, if there's one thing that's not lacking in this band, are ideas. There's already, they, they come in like from left and right, up and down, and sure. then we categorize them, pretty organized like that, so here's the for that, and same with ideas sent in by fans, it's all categorized right. for a later time, and we can pick from it, you know, and fit it in the right way, but, but what I like then is like History Channel, where you have every Sabaton song, I think all of them are done. I think it's cool that if you're into history, you can dig deeper if you want to. Like, it's right there, go ahead. 40 to 1, okay, cool, I'll check it out and I dig deeper, oh, I didn't know that. Which goes for me as well, I don't know all this stuff by heart. I, when I joined this band, it's like, oof, I had no idea. Why haven't I seen a Hollywood movie about this story? And then also for the people that also like to listen to heavy metal and drink a beer and that are not interested in history, that's fine too, you know what I mean? So I think it's important balance to keep there also. Like, if you want to dig deeper, here it is. If you want to listen and have a beer, fine. And, and I, I, can, I can say just from my own personal perspective, that's exactly what's happened. Is that I, I started listening to you guys back with Primo Victoria. Yeah, okay. uh, I think you weren't in the band. No, nope, no. Nope. Uh, but it makes me, 40 to 1 is a perfect example. I had no idea what you guys were yeah. talking about. Uh, or the Winter War. No clue what that yeah. was. Yeah. And so it, for people who are interested in it, we go in and we start reading that and it engages us on a completely different level. 
Yeah. Which makes the music that much more, I guess, more than it. So yeah. on that note, you obviously have a very big following. I don't know about in other parts of the world, but in America, the U.S. military is like way into you guys. Yeah. Huge. Oh wow. Uh, especially since you have so much that's involved with tanks and all that stuff. Yeah. Have you? What do? What have you? I guess your engagement with the U.S. military. Have you guys thought about doing anything where you're going out and you're performing specifically for them? Yeah. Anything along those lines. Oh, that would be an honor. No doubt about it, for sure. Uh, we did Devil Dogs on the Great War, which is about yeah you know, the Devil Dogs. Yeah. So yeah, oh for sure. We we try to keep in contact as much as we can. But that's awesome. I'm I'm just happy that that people like it. Really, you know, if, it's a big honor. Okay. So to promote you guys going forward, obviously you've got touring. Everyone's been you know kind of hunkered down for yeah. a few years. What are the plans? What are we going to doing going forward? Yeah. Yeah, two years of pandemic where we did everything but playing. Yeah. So we had a lot, lot to uh, to that we missed that we need to get back to. Right. And to be honest, man, like it's so great to be out. Just I think all of us. I mean, you get a lot of time to think during two years, uh, and we stayed quite busy anyway. We did a lot of off uh, off um, singles and a lot of we did I don't know eight music videos. So we kept yeah. quite busy, but we didn't play. Well, a few shows here and there, but so I'm looking at my guys, and I can see that people are just so glad to be to be back and playing again and meeting people. We said the other day, it's like when you you let cattle out on green fresh bait. That's what's happening now, from band to audience. Right. And so, so, and so beyond the touring, I mean, so you've got that ahead of you. Anything yeah. else beyond that? Any other? Any other? Plans, and I don't mean just album creation, but obviously, you know, other venues, other projects that you guys are working on. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on. Uh, first off, I mean, we, we, we're out to uh, to uh, tour on the, the War Tendal Wars album, and that's what we're going to do for quite a while. So yeah. we're going to do now festivals all summer. We have a few headline shows coming up late summer. Then we go to the U.S. in the fall. Excited. Then comes there. the European tour. So yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Excellent.